right, girls, what's the, what's the game plan? Operation getting Gizmo back. All right. He's our gremlin. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Well, guys, I'm changing it up a little bit here. We're going to start with the real content. It doesn't always have to be about boating. You might sometimes remember how fast you went that day, but with really good friends, you'll never forget how hard you laughed. And why the heck are we stealing a gremlin out of the back of Sean Trente's boat? You'll find out coming up. But first, and as always, we tell a story. And here's where this story of four fun runs in four days begins. In the silence, I understand it when they say the silence is deafening. It's almost like... It's so quiet that you feel like you're deaf. That's what that means. And the first sound that comes to me is birds flying overhead just... <sighs> And the older I get, the more I realize that life is about simplicity. <sighs> I'm waiting for that bug to be eaten right there. There's a little bug right there. And while my wife and I race across the water in a life that may not be that simple, yeah, he's gonna get toasted. it gives me hope. Guaranteed. Hope for the future of when I do slow down that I'm ready. But I'm not there yet. So sit down on your sofa, grab a bowl of popcorn, strap a life jacket on so your wife looks at you like you're a freak, then strap a life jacket on her and enjoy a how to live life before it's too late. Honey, what's going on? Show me the bucket. It's one hell of an adventure. Blue crabbing it, dude. Blue crabbing it with a busted up net. Look at this. We have a serious handicap. They don't make things like they used to. You have crabs in your pants? We have crabs in the bucket. Over and out. Look at that sunset. We are now crabbing for the... All right, I know what you guys are thinking. This is supposed to be about four front runs in four days. What are we doing crabbing or going on airboat rides? But for this channel, it's not just about the boat or boating, it's about where the boat brings you and the adventures that come along with it. And catch and cook blue crabbing with the net was one of the coolest adventures of the week. Right away, Sarah and I decided to just leave everybody and go as far as we could out into the middle of the salt marsh. We were about a mile or two out there. The good news is we felt like it was gonna pay off for the bounty. The bad news is, well, you're a little bit closer to the creatures you don't want to be around. There might have been some saltwater crocs and some alligators in there too. We do see them often. I think the key is just to focus on the glowing eyes in the water, which are the crabs, and not the glowing eyes floating on top of the water. You should be all set, theoretically. So Sarah and I, we come back right after friggin' totally delivering the family's food for the night. And this was, <laughs> that was almost a complete digger. But here's the thing, I don't know how many of you guys think we got. Uh, oh, woo! Mother I guess five. Those are proper size. So Josh, Jeffrey. You won! Nothing good comes easy. You gotta earn it. A lot of people want to know what the secret weapon was. It's that net. <laughs> Work pisser. <laughs> what do you think, little one? Good. Mike, what are you doing there? Right now, I'm basically prepping the crab. If you guys have been watching this channel for any amount of time, you guys know my wife and I love to hunt, we love to fish, and we love to catch and cook. It's just so much more rewarding to put food on the table that you've earned without putting pressure on the system. It is a little crazy to think though, I almost didn't put this in there because I didn't want to offend anybody by cleaning a crab. But at the end of the day, this is mother nature. And to us, a quality life isn't about avoiding things that might offend you. It's about opening your horizons and learning new things. 
I can test it's less fake to go collect your food from the forest or the swamp than it is your local grocery store. After a fantastic catch and cook that nobody seemed to film because the dinner was that good, we woke up early the next morning to start this long 1500 mile trip. Four fun runs in four days. How much we've packed here? What do we have? You're not supposed to see all these bags. <laughs> Honey, we were supposed to pack light. But we're gonna be gone for over a week. Okay, that's true. So what do we got? And it's fun runs and it's some parties and it's New Year's Eve and it's a work project. So you need a variety. My whittled down camera equipment, I'm not gonna bring a drone this time. You guys know what boats look like from a drone and it's just, it gets too much. And we've got a bunch of GoPros and obviously the cell phones. And here's the thing with the 360s. The 360s, I know they can distort the view, if you render them kind of wide, wide angle. But the 360 is really good for just capturing other moments around the boat. So while the, while yes, I agree the 360 can add kind of a weird lens, that's only if you choose it to. Otherwise, it can just capture good video. So here's my goal, honey. This will be the second four by four we've done with this boat, exact setup, no issue since. My goal is to get back here in about eight days time after doing close to 1,500, 2,000 miles with a boat that's running and together and, and purring like a kitten. It's a tall order. That's the goal. She does something. <laughs> she definitely works way harder than I do. Well, we're almost seven minutes in. I haven't even talked about what exactly are we doing. So let's get the Google map out and go over exactly where we're going and what we're doing for this four fun runs in four days, which is gonna be about 1,500 miles and take about six to seven days total. So in order for Sarah and I to complete these four fun runs in four days without a trailer, we have to leave Big Pine and travel up the southern west coast of Florida. Our first stop is gonna be Everglades City then we're gonna to go to Cape Coral, and then we're gonna go all the way up to Sarasota and Tampa. We're gonna complete three fun runs up there, then we're gonna go all the way back down to Cape Coral to finish the last fun run, the FMO. If everything goes well, we're then gonna go east all the way to Lake Okeechobee, and then once we hit the east coast, we're gonna go south, all the way to Miami and then the Keys. Keep in mind, we're not doing this in a sailboat or a cruiser, we're doing this on a go-fast boat, at speeds of 90 to 125 miles an hour. So we must be on our toes and we must play prevent defense. This is not a race, but it's an enduro. The true challenge is to get home in one piece. After leaving our house, the first stop is actually to fuel up. Now I wouldn't put this in here normally, but it's a really cool stop in Marathon. It's called Fair Blanca. It's a good place to eat, but also it's a good place to fuel now because it's the first 24 hour pump on the water in the Keys the life save. Yeah, it's perfect. I usually do the twist, but we, we have a southerly, so we're good. We have to be in Tampa in a couple hours. Tampa being 300 miles away. I wonder if he got my humor. Something tells me he did. From Blanca, we head almost due north about 30 or 40 miles to a really cool place called the Southern Cape. As we passed this, I couldn't help but just sit back and daydream and reminisce of a time of about a year and a half ago when I originally came down with COVID. The game plan was simple. Just get away from everybody. Go camping. And we basically threw a dart at the map and we came up with the Southern Cape. And it was just an amazing experience to go ahead and kick COVID with my wife on a beautiful deserted beach. Taking that negative experience and trying to make something positive out of it was something we strive to do. And that is truly how we try to live. I'm pretty sure the old guffers would say, when given lemons, yeah, just make some lemonade. Of course, we found out later that we did make our campsite on a saltwater crocodile slide. Oops. I think I can smell that. That's the first thing I've smelled in uh, five days or six days. 
I can just barely smell that. Oh, that's a good sign. Oh yes, Corona quarantine. Smell check. Mm. Oh my God, I can't believe you guys let me get that distracted. Yes, that was a year and a half ago. That was my first round with COVID and uh, it was awesome. All right, let's move on. We are headed up to a place called Everglades City, which is my favorite city on the southern west coast of Florida. It's not really a city, more like a, I don't know, like a town out of 1920s or 30s, Prohibition era. It's just awesome. And this is why we're putting it in this video. It's a must stop. I don't want to get ahead of ourselves here and start explaining how cool this Everglades city is with a place called the Rotten Gun Club before I talk about the entrance and how you get in here. It's a cool, desolate, windy river through the Everglades that really makes you feel like you're at home if you're a swamp creature or if you're in a 390 and decide to belt it. into a new unexplored spot you've never been with the sun setting behind your back and illuminating new lands in front of you to explore is exactly why my wife and I do what we do this to us is truly how to live it's not necessarily about the four fun runs in four days it's about everything in between it's about the things you don't expect And the first time rolling into Everglades City as the sun sets is one of those lost gems you'll never expect and you'll never forget. We introduce you to one of the coolest spots in Everglades City, the famous Rod and Gun Club. It sucks when you have, look at that piling. Oh, what am I gonna do? How are we gonna do this? Thank God we have the Mikey Boyle Easy Fenders. Honey, what do you think about the Mikey Boyle Easy Fenders? That is how to live. I couldn't help but do a shout out to my good buddy, Mikey Boyle. He does make these amazing fenders and they do come in really, really handy on some of these old busted up pilings you find in Florida. So what is Everglades City? Well, first of all, Everglades City isn't really a city. It's basically a town in the middle of the Everglades. And the only way you can get to it is by one single road. You can also boat to it and it does have a small airport. But for all intents and purposes, it is the town stuffed out there in the middle of nowhere. It was originally founded back in the late 1800s by a guy named George W. Storner Jr. Now he built Everglades City's first trading post and named it the Rod and Gun Club. Many presidents have stayed there. It just so happens that's where Sarah and I are staying tonight. And it really makes you feel like you're walking into a different time, like maybe the 1920s or 1930s. Now, don't expect five-star Miami-style hotel accommodations. That's not what you're here for. You're here for kind of the adventure. And you will certainly get that at the Rod Gun Club. This is cool. This is something you don't see everywhere. 
This is legit, really, really cool. It's just so authentic I'm lost. back I'm to looking for my husband. 100 okay, years lost. ago. Where do you want us? Inside or outside? Inside or outside? Yeah, yeah. He just films everything. Oh. Welcome to my lab. Back in the 70s and 80s when the fishing and hunting might have not been that good at Everglades City, some of the locals decided to diversify their portfolio and branch out and become entrepreneurs in a business I like to call Square Grouper Recovery Services. Now we're told those days are long gone, but every once in a while you might just look out there and see a floating square grouper wash up on a distant beach. From exhilarating airboat rides to world-class fishing and world-class hunting, Everglades City these days is mostly fueled by tourism. Really, people? <laughs> you know I why know. I say that? Because there's crocs over here. And bull sharks. Oh. I'm looking at the context of the sign. I, I'm not really looking at the spelling. <laughs> like, as a bull shark is ripping my leg off, I'm gonna be like, oh yeah, did they spell that sign wrong? Men are from Mars, women are from Venus. And that's what makes the world awesome. But they're lucky I didn't have my Sharpie. Every once in a while, I do like to review how we like to do things. It, it doesn't mean that it's the only way. It's just how we find it works for us. Now, we're from Maine, where we have really big tides, up to 12 feet. And if you don't tie your boat up correctly, you can walk out of a restaurant or hotel and find your boat hanging on the dock. So we like to use, no matter where we are, long scopes and long diagonals ensures that your boat, no matter what the tide, isn't going to get hung up. This is really important when you're in waters that you don't know. And it happened to us in Nassau when we had really strong tides over there. It hung up everyone's boat, except for that couple from Maine. So it's something we do now no matter where we are, and it's a great practice. Well, the original game plan was to just get a good night's sleep here at our favorite little town out in the middle of nowhere, and then we're going to head up to Cape Coral for the first fun run of the four fun runs. But first, it's time to get some supplies. We do have about a 200 mile trip on the open ocean today. Honey, nice fanny pack. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to 1988. I love the 80s. The 80s is like the best. So I'm okay with a fanny pack. I was born in the 80s. Great decade. Looks like you're hip and a baby. <laughs> This is all I need to keep track of you. You want to show the, show everyone what you did last night and why I need to carry this? I have every medical supply I ever needed. He just couldn't find them. But now I carry them with me 24 seven. So we broke into that bad boy last night and uh, alcohol that up. Now we're letting it dry out. It doesn't seem to be drying. It seems to be weeping. Honey, do we have some sort of suture kit? But that doesn't really work for a rest I have there. a tourniquet. Honey, it looks like it's weeping a little bit too much. I think we have to wait one more day to dry this one out. Try not to cry when I do this this time. Okay. The alcohol was rugged. For some reason, alcohol on a, on a on like an abrasion is way worse than alcohol on a cut. There. Four days. Four more fun runs. We haven't even started yet. And we're breaking out the band-aids. Nobody told you, honey, this is a contact sport? Everything to do with a contact sport. <laughs> All right, let's go for an airboat ride.
If you want to know what an airboat ride was like, that is exactly what it's like. That's exactly what it's like. All right, where were we? We were supposed to be doing four fun runs in four days. We get so damn distracted. We are at the 20 minute mark, you guys, and that means we're gonna wrap it up. It's just a thing. Most people don't watch videos past 20 minutes, so that's what we make them. Stay tuned for next week's episode. It's gonna be full pack of fun runs, I promise. We're just building up to them, and here's a sneak peek. It's you guys! 2001, the first year of my entire life I've ever, ever walked on a car. Our spirit never swayed. We faced our fears. Good way to bring in the new year. Watch the shadows fade. Our vision's clear. Focus is locked on tight. Live. Gonna move these mountains.